Police are supposed to protect us and if they break the rules themselves, face discipline for their misconduct. But King 5 investigator Linda Byron has learned an audit of the King County Sheriff's Office finds lax accountability at nearly every level. Sources tell us the audit is scathing and it'll be unveiled at a council hearing tomorrow. The King County Auditor's Office hired outside experts to help them evaluate how well the Sheriff's Department polices itself. Sources tell King 5 they found serious lapses. For example, when a deputy shoots someone, there's supposed to be a review to determine whether the shooting was justified. But when auditors asked to see reviews for five shootings from 2011, two of them fatal, those reviews didn't exist. No one ever did them. The findings echo what the King 5 investigators have found in past cases, like this one, where an innocent man was left brain damaged after being slammed into a wall by a deputy. The case cost the county $10 million, yet internal investigations was never asked to review the deputy's use of force. Then there's the handling of citizen complaints. Our investigation exposed the case of Jeff Gold, tackled by a deputy while jaywalking. Gold was left bloodied, but never charged with a crime. I wanted the incident investigated to the extent that I sincerely believed that the officer had overstepped his bounds. Gold complained, but the sheriff's office dropped the ball. It wasn't supposed to be this way. In 2006, then Sheriff Sue Rahr formed a blue ribbon panel promising reforms in response to a newspaper series, Conduct Unbecoming, which exposed a pattern of deputy misconduct. Have you kept that promise? Is this what accountability looks like? Yes, it is, Linda. What you're talking about are two cases that are clearly anomalies to the behavior of my deputies. Sources tell us the audit will spotlight other lapses. Some 100 complaints were routed away from headquarters to the precincts where they languished. The internal investigations unit, which should have handled them, completely cut out of the process. And a computer system set up to track complaints and deputy misconduct was ineffective because supervisors failed to enter key information. At the King County Courthouse, Linda Byron, King 5 News. The Sheriff's Office declined to comment for our story until after the audit is presented to a King County Council committee tomorrow morning. As we first reported last night, a scathing audit finds major lapses in how the King County Sheriff's Office polices itself. The audit was presented to the County Council Committee on Government Oversight today. Well, the auditors found many of the same problems we exposed in the King 5 investigation, Bully with a Badge. Linda Byron takes us through the new report. King County promised to overhaul its Sheriff's Office in 2006, but new reports by county auditors and a team of outside police experts found serious lapses in the Sheriff's Office, including lax oversight and a tolerance of deputy misconduct. You have to be able to hold your supervisors accountable for the role that they play as a supervisor. The auditors told a council committee that officer-involved shootings weren't being reviewed, even when someone died and complaints about excessive force weren't getting to internal investigations. 1.9 million people live in King County, yet there were only two use of force investigations done in all of 2011. Portland, a city a third that size, did 41. Even Eugene, Oregon had 14. And not only fully staffed, but fully staffed with experienced sergeants. Sheriff Steve Strand promises an immediate fix, including beefing up the internal investigations unit. It's a massive, culture change to ensure that we're being effective and accountable and respectful. Auditors place some of the blame for the failures on the police union for blocking attempts to hold deputies accountable. So I'm challenging the leadership of the guild to come forward. They should be here today. Shame on the guild leadership for not being in the room today, Mr. Chair. Just this year, the guild has filed three grievances against the new civilian oversight director brought in to monitor investigations and increase public trust. Bottom line, what's been the biggest obstacle to you doing what you came here to do? In a word, I'd have to say the union uh, and their inability to, or unwillingness rather, to work with us collaboratively. The auditors recommended 16 fixes, but some of the key changes would not be allowed in the current police guild contract. It expires in December. A lot of these reforms will depend on what happens with the next guild contract. Negotiations are just getting underway, 
And for the first time, it's not just the county executive bargaining with the King County Police Officers Guild. The sheriff actually has a seat at the table. At the King County Sheriff's Office, Linda Byron, King 5 News. The police guild incidentally did not return our calls seeking comment. The King County Sheriff responds to another scathing audit detailing flaws in how his department investigates use of force and deputy misconduct. The audit will be officially released tomorrow, but King 5 investigator Linda Byron obtained a copy and has late reaction from the sheriff. Linda. Well, that's right. During a late interview, the sheriff appeared angry. The audit was leaked before it could be officially presented to the King County Council tomorrow. Even so, he says he welcomes the findings. Now, this is the second scathing report on practices in the sheriff's office, and it confirms much of what we found in our investigation, Bully with a Badge. This is one of the cases the auditors found troubling. A deputy slamming Christopher Harris into a wall, causing brain damage. He used to love to eat and cook and eat. We can't do that. Mm. Oh, he's on a feeding tube. Harris was innocent, and King County paid out a $10 million settlement. But commanders in the sheriff's office ruled the use of force justified. Auditors took issue with that, saying, quote, the conclusion that the use of force was justified lacked a substantial basis in fact, leading them to question the department's capacity to fairly judge its own deputies. It's not just the Harris case. This audit, conducted by the Los Angeles-based Police Assessment Resource Center, found that the sheriff's office routinely finds officer-involved shootings to be justified without any serious review. You have to be able to hold your supervisors accountable for the role that they play as a supervisor. The audit comes on the heels of a report in July which found citizen complaints being ignored and major flaws in how the sheriff's office handles allegations of deputy misconduct. I think it's very disturbing and I think that we, the, the, the quicker we move forward with a solution, the, uh, the better. Our job as legislators here is to make sure that we hold the sheriff's office accountable and that we follow through on these reforms which are so badly needed. Sheriff Steve Strand says he agrees with the findings and has already started making the recommended changes. This is a constructive and helpful audit. I look forward to it. And the fact is, it's what we've been doing all along. It's going to help us move to best practices. It's exactly where we're going at the King County Sheriff's Office. Strand also said the sheriff's office is a good department but can and must do better. The audit was commissioned by King County's Office of Law Enforcement Oversight, which was established to fix problems uncovered years ago in the Sheriff's Office, and they will officially present the audit tomorrow to the King County Council, including 25 recommendations for changes. All right, Linda, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Strong words from the King County Sheriff today, vowing to reform how his department polices itself. That after a scathing audit was presented to the County Council this morning, the second audit in two months to slam practices in the Sheriff's Office. King 5 investigator Linda Byron exposed many of the problems in her series, Bully with a Badge. She's here with what happened at the council hearing today. Linda. Well, Dennis and Lori, council members tell me they wanted these audits done to find out if things had improved in the six years since a blue ribbon panel found a tolerance of misconduct and lax accountability in the sheriff's office. And bottom line, there are still big problems. Number seven, we recommend adding the following question and space for comments to the supervisor use of force. One by one, the auditors yeah, ticked sure off their recommendations for fixing the way the King County yeah. Sheriff's Office investigates yeah. use of force by its deputies and allegations of misconduct. There are 25 recommendations in the report, which was done by a nationally recognized police consulting firm. These include requiring deputies to give statements about why they used force immediately following the incident, instead of allowing them to carefully construct a written explanation three days later. This 72-hour hour period can inhibit a deputy's peer recollection of what happened. The auditors they want more citizen you. involvement in use of force reviews and complaints about deputy misconduct to go directly to internal investigations. Many have been lost or ignored by supervisors. And it is why I'm here. I can tell you that I am on board. King County Sheriff Steve Strand agreed with 23 of the 25 recommendations, but at least nine appear to violate the current union contract and will require bargaining. You keep asking the question, am I going to fight the union? I'm going to advocate very strongly. And the sheriff could be in for a fight. 
Just this year, the Guild has filed three grievances against the new civilian oversight director brought in to monitor investigations, preventing him from even attending shooting reviews. We have been looking at a period of time that is longer than a year and a half. But now the council's government accountability committee is throwing its weight behind this audit and the one presented in July with legislation setting deadlines for the reforms. No later than a week from Monday, I would anticipate the county council will take action on that legislation. So council members say progress has definitely been slower than they'd hoped since that blue ribbon panel in 2006. But one key thing did happen. They say they got the Civilian Office of Law Enforcement Oversight up and running last fall. And they got these audits, which show exactly what they say needs to happen next. So we'll be watching. All right, Linda, thanks. thanks. Good evening. A judge slams King County's handling of a police misconduct case and orders it to pay more money to the victim's family. That's on top of the $10 million already paid. Documents uncovered by the King 5 investigators led to today's ruling. Chris Ingalls is live in Pierce County where the case is being heard to avoid a conflict of interest. Chris. Dennis Jean Christopher Harris is permanently disabled with head and spine injuries and his family has already received uh, the largest settlement of its kind ever in King County. But a judge today ruled that is not money enough. King County Deputy Matt Paul shoves a man, mistakenly identified by witnesses as an assault suspect, into a wall. It seemed like this case was settled, $10 million to the family of victim Christopher Harris. Through its callous indifference. This afternoon, with Harris's wife and uncle looking on, a judge reignited the civil case with stinging words for King County. Defendant King County's lack of effort and pattern of deliberate indifference with respect to producing responsive information to plaintiff Harris is reprehensible. The judge ordered an additional $300,000 payment to the victim's family, ruling that King County willfully withheld documents that would have helped the victim's family in their lawsuit. The first of the three documents defendant King County failed to produce came to light during a King 5 news broadcast. That's when the King 5 investigators revealed serious, high-level concerns about Deputy Matt Paul, seen on the tape shoving Harris. In this 2007 email, a supervisor at the Police Training Academy said Deputy Paul exhibited behaviors that were a concern, and we no longer wish to use him. This was just one of several documents King 5 uncovered that were not supplied to the Harris family. But it was not produced, at least in part, because no one conducted an electronic search for documents. King County Sheriff Steve Strand was in the courtroom for the ruling. He says his office has 25 different work sites, so finding emails isn't so easy. As I say, I, I think I did not feel at all that this was intentional. She, she didn't want Harris's wife wouldn't comment on the judge's decision today, but Steve Harris says the incident that injured his nephew was only the first in a series of hurtful mistakes by King County. They needed a good tongue lashing, and she gave it to them. They have been doing everything wrong, so hopefully this will get them to change their ways of doing business. So the judge ordered that $300,000 payment plus attorney's fees, but it doesn't stop there. She also ordered an evidentiary hearing in the future to determine if uh, the Harris family's case suffered further harm because it didn't get these documents. Uh, following that hearing, the judge could order King County to pay even more money. The family's asking for an additional $3 million. Deputy Matt Paul remains on the uh, Sheriff's Department with King County. Meantime, Sheriff uh, Strand says that he was not a part, he was not the sheriff at the time the decision to keep Paul on was made, and he's not going to go back and revisit that issue now. I'm Chris Ingalls reporting live in Tacoma. As we first reported on King5.com, King County has agreed to pay nearly $1.5 million to a man left brain damaged when he was slammed into a wall by a sheriff's deputy. It's compensation for the county withholding key documents uncovered by the King 5 investigators about the deputy's pattern of using force. Linda Byron joins us now with the latest twist. Linda. Well, Jean and Dennis, you may recall King County already paid $10 million to Chris Harris's family to cover his 24-hour care. But the family went back to court after learning the sheriff's office never gave them files showing the deputy had a history of complaints about his tactics and his use of force. What are the secrets oh. to fine cooking? Seasoning. <laughs> he used to love to eat and cook and eat. 
Chris Harris once loved whipping up gourmet dinners for his family. Do it, do it. Come on. Now he can't feed himself. Oh, do it again. Do it again. And struggles to blow out a candle on his birthday. Harris was left permanently disabled after he was tackled by King County Sheriff's Deputy Matt Paul. He'd been mistakenly ID'd as a suspect, and King County paid his family a record $10 million settlement. Now they've agreed to pay nearly $1.5 million more in sanctions and to issue a formal apology. Apologizes to the Harris family, for, not only for the injuries and the devastation caused to them by the initial incident, but for the way they handled the lawsuit. The Harris family went back to court after learning on a King 5 broadcast that Deputy Paul had a history of using unnecessary force and questionable tactics. The county was aware of a pattern of abuses or actions by Deputy Paul, and they turned a blind eye to it. Through its callous indifference. In September, with Harris's wife and uncle looking on, a judge slammed King County for failing to supply the Harris family with hundreds of pages of documents, including prior complaints about his use of force. Defendant King County's lack of effort and pattern of deliberate indifference with respect to producing responsive information to plaintiff Harris is reprehensible. One document revealed high-level concerns about Deputy Paul, seen on the tape shoving Harris. In this 2007 email, a supervisor at the Police Training Academy warned Paul exhibited behaviors that were a concern and we no longer wish to use him. The concerns included using force far above the norm and showing a macho type demeanor. With the latest settlement, the Harris family tells King Five they're relieved they can put lawsuits behind them and focus on Chris's care. Yay! He turns 32 tomorrow. Now, a judge still has to approve the settlement. In all, King County failed to give the Harris family some 750 pages of documents, in part because they never did an electronic search for records. And in yet another case, King County still faces a federal lawsuit by a jaywalker who was tackled to the ground by Deputy Paul. Is Deputy Paul still on the force, and is there any action being taken about him? He is still on the force. He's working in the Maple Valley area. They will only say they're watching him closely. After our Bully with a Badge series, he was put on a personal improvement plan, and he's being supervised. More to come. Linda, thank you. Starting this Wednesday, there's a new sheriff in town. John Urquhart gets sworn in as King County's elected top cop, replacing the man appointed to the post when Sue Rahr retired. John Urquhart takes over during a very difficult time for the sheriff's office. King 5's Linda Byron sat down with him this afternoon to discuss his plans for handling everything from problem deputies to restoring public trust. Linda? So you remember, John Urquhart ran his campaign promising leadership and accountability. And he faces some immediate challenges that will put those promises to the test. The first day on Wednesday is meetings with uh, all my staff. John Urquhart says he will get to work immediately to improve accountability in the sheriff's office from top to bottom. Making sure deputies and supervisors are monitored and citizen complaints are heard. My main overriding concern over and above everything, is making sure that the public, that the citizens of King County can trust the sheriff's office. We have been looking at a period. Urquhart is taking office just days after the sheriff's office agreed to pay nearly $1.5 million to the family of Christopher Harris. He's an innocent man left severely brain damaged by a King County deputy. During a lawsuit, the county failed to turn over documents that revealed a pattern of unnecessary force by the deputy. The people who withheld that information are still on the job. Should any heads roll? It's too early for me to tell. I don't have all the details yet because I've been out of the sheriff's office for almost a year. The deputy who delivered that debilitating blow remains on the job too. And Urquhart says he will stay there. It's not a question of won't fire him. It's a question of I can't fire him. Why not? Because I wasn't the sheriff at the time. This is three years later. The law wouldn't let me fire him if I wanted to. Urquhart says he will make changes called for in two recent audits which harshly criticized how the sheriff's office polices itself. Auditors laid out a list of 25 recommendations. How many will you implement and when will you begin? 25, and I'll start on Wednesday. Urquhart retired from the sheriff's department a year ago, saying he was trading in his badge for a beach. Then, in a surprise move, 
he ran against the incumbent and won. He will face another election next fall because he's replacing the man appointed when Sheriff Sue Rar quit. I knew that going in. I'm ready for it. Urquhart will need buy-in from the police guild to make nearly a third of the auditor's recommendations actually happen. He says he will push for the necessary changes during contract talks, which are already underway. So the King County Sheriff's Office is, doesn't have the very difficult reputation the SPD does, but they could come under federal review at some point, couldn't they? They could. In fact, that has been under discussion. There have been some people saying they think that might happen, including the head of the Office of Law Enforcement Oversight saying if we don't really get moving on these reforms, uh, the Department of Justice could step in. The Department of Justice, we do know, is looking into the case involving Deputy Matt Paul and his um, handling of both Christopher Harris and a jaywalker who he slammed to the ground a year later um, in what's pretty questionable use of force. More to come. That's right. We'll be on it. Linda, thank you. A follow-up now on a King 5 investigation. King County will pay a Seattle man tens of thousands of dollars to settle his claim that a deputy slammed him to the ground and broke his nose just for jaywalking. As King 5's Linda Byron reports, he's the same deputy who cost taxpayers millions in another controversial case. As soon as a citizen confronts his authority, or he just goes off. It's been nearly three years since Jeff Gold's jaywalking encounter with a King County deputy. And he still has the scars. Right about here, you know, when when Officer Paul thrust me to the sidewalk, this 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 was the first part to hit. Gold had angered Deputy Matt Paul first by photographing the deputy on the street, then by jaywalking and refusing an order to stop. Kind of kicked my legs out from under me and dropped me to the ground. Point point of impact. Gold complained in writing directly to the sheriff's office. He wanted an investigation, but his demands fell on deaf ears. Gold sued the deputy for excessive force and the department for not taking action. King County has agreed to pay him $75,000 to drop the suit. King County's already paid more than $11 million to another innocent man, Chris Harris, left brain damaged when Deputy Paul tackled him into a wall. Cases exposed by the King 5 investigators, which prompted the FBI to take notice. I hope that the break in the system gets fixed. If that requires the intervention of the Justice Department and FBI, so, so be it. The values I'm going to impart Meantime, to newly elected sheriff John Urquhart says he's keeping a close eye on every deputy's okay. use of force. Sometimes. We're going to thoroughly investigate and document uses of force. We're going to use best practices to do that, and we're going to change our policies and procedures to make sure that that happens. And Jeff Gold? He now crosses at the light. In Seattle, Linda Byron, King 5 News. The FBI won't say whether they intend to take action, only that they're aware of the incidents and take complaints regarding violations of federal law seriously. A King County man is shot multiple times in his bed. Police fired the shots, but the man was innocent. He survived, and tonight King 5 investigator Linda Byron reports on why the shooting is facing renewed scrutiny, just as a mediation gets underway to try to avert a costly lawsuit. The barrage of bullets fired inside this Auburn home in 2012 left Dustin Theo Harris with a shattered jaw and shoulder, fractured spine, and damage to his limbs and organs. He was shot 16 times. Then Sheriff Steve Strand defended the shooting. I made reference to having three guns, and there was uh, an interaction. Uh, the deputy and the officer felt threatened. The team of King County deputies and a state corrections officer who'd gone into the house weren't after Theo Harris. They were there for a convicted felon who'd broken parole. But after arresting the felon, corrections officer Chris Rungan asked Detective Aaron Thompson, his face concealed in this photo because he works undercover, to help search the rest of the house for guns. We obtained the detective's recorded statement of what happened when they entered a downstairs room and found Theo Harris in bed. He looked back and forth at Chris and I and Chris asked him if he had any weapons, and he said yes. Both of us were shouting at him, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up, and he stopped and looked at us, and then he jammed his hand like he was reaching, I thought he was probably reaching in between the mattress and the box spring to get something, and that's when we started shooting. 
Theo Harris didn't have any guns, just a flashlight. But together, the officers fired nearly 20 rounds. There is no higher level of threat. I thought he was going to try to kill us. The Department of Corrections found the shooting in compliance, and a King County Firearms Review Board ruled it justified. But we reviewed thousands of pages of documents detailing investigations by both departments, revealing problems across the operation. It was unclear who was in charge or whether the officers properly announced themselves. And despite being told that Theo Harris was in that bedroom, they failed to come up with a safe tactical plan for entry. Theo Harris's lawyers say the officers even lacked authority to enter his room. And Sheriff John Urquhart, who took office months after the shooting, concedes there are lingering questions. Did they do enough before they entered the room to find out who was there, to find out if it was a third party residence or not, to look at the history of this particular individual? Theo Harris has no criminal record. King County's Internal Investigations Unit recommended Detective Thompson receive sustained violations for his use of authority and performance standards. But the sheriff threw out those violations. The supervisory situation there, the other officers that were at the scene, they skated on this whole thing. Aaron Thompson was made a scapegoat, and that's not right, and that's not fair, and that's why I overturned that. The case is far from over. King County's Office of Law Enforcement Oversight hired a heavy hitter to review it, Merrick Bob, the same man appointed by a judge to monitor reforms in the Seattle Police Department. I certainly support that review, absolutely. As for Theo Harris, his attorneys say he's facing more surgeries and suffered so much damage to his arm, his days as a skilled mechanic are over. In Auburn, Linda Byron, King 5 News. King County is paying Bob nearly $25,000 for his review, which will be presented to council members soon. Meantime, the sheriff says he's increasing training and revamping policies for how shootings are investigated. The O'Harris' attorneys say that his shooting was totally unjustified, but they declined to be interviewed, saying that they are working with King County and the DOC to resolve the case before filing a formal lawsuit. King County has agreed to pay millions to an innocent man who was shot a number of times in his bed. It happened when a team of officers went to a house to arrest a man wanted on a parole violation. King 5 investigator Linda Byron exposed problems with the botched operation and has the latest developments. The barrage of bullets fired inside this Auburn home last year left Dustin Theo Harris with a broken body. He had a shattered jaw, uh, a broken shoulder, two broken arms, broken legs. And a broken life. He's lost his peace of mind. He's lost uh, his ability to uh, pursue the profession that he loves. Theo Harris was lying in bed when he was shot 16 times by corrections officer Chris Rongen and undercover deputy Aaron Thompson. The Department of Corrections found the shooting in compliance and a King County Firearms Review Board ruled it justified. But King County has agreed to pay $3 million to the injured man, and the sheriff apologized to Theo Harris in person. It was very sad, very sad. Uh, we can't ever make him whole. We can't bring him back to the man that he was, ever. Uh, and that's a shame. I felt horrible. The team of officers entered the house to arrest a parole violator, but then decided to search the room Theo Harris was renting. A witness describes what happened next. They rushed down into that room, I mean, like like they were going to get somebody. I mean, they rushed down there. And then all of a sudden it was boom, 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 boom. The officers later told investigators they saw Theo Harris reaching and thought he had a gun. There is no higher level of threat. I thought he was going to try to kill us. There was no gun, but there were serious questions about whether the officers had authority or even a valid reason to enter the bedroom. I think there are things that could have been done differently, that should have been done differently, that will be done differently uh, going forward. His lawyers say Theo Harris is grateful the sheriff apologized, but it's a shooting that never should have happened. At the end of the day, an innocent person was shot 16 times in his own bed who wasn't doing anything wrong in a situation where the law enforcement officers had no right whatsoever to even enter his room. Theo Harris is scheduled for jaw reconstruction surgery later this month, his 13th operation. Linda Byron, King 5 News.
Urquhart was not sheriff when the shooting happened. After he took office, he suspended the operation where deputies teamed up with corrections officers to serve warrants.